Hello students! It's been a while. Welcome back again to Maestrong Techie YouTube channel. For today's video lesson, we are going to talk about Grade 10 Science Quarter 3 Lesson Human Reproductive System. This is our most essential learning competency. Explain the role of hormones involved in the female and male reproductive system. If you want to know more about this lesson, please keep on watching. Before we proceed, let's have first a very short recall. Remember class, our body is composed of millions of cells, and cells make up of tissues. Tissues make up of organs, and organs make up of organ systems. And we have a total of 12 organ systems in our body. They coordinate with one another in order to perform their functions very well. And if any part of these organ malfunctions, the body will become unbalanced. Now, let us define what is reproductive system. It is a collection of organs and a network of hormone production that work together to create life. But why do we need to reproduce? Number one, to ensure survival of the species. Number two, to produce egg and sperm cells. Number three, to transport and sustain these cells. Number four, to nurture the developing offspring. And lastly, to produce hormones. Male and female reproductive systems share a number of similarities, but there is striking difference between the male and female reproductive system. Like for example, male sperm production begins at puberty. Females are born with ova. Moreover, males produce millions of sperm while females release one ovum each month. But one thing is for sure reproductive system is important. Now, let us discuss first the male reproductive system. And here are the functions of the male reproductive system. Number one, secretion of the male sex hormones. Number two, production of sperm cells. And lastly, transfer of sperm cells. Now, let us discuss the parts and functions of the male reproductive system and their mechanism. In human males, the reproductive system is mostly outside. The parts outside include the penis, scrotum, and testicles. The penis is the male organ used for sexual reproduction and urination. It reaches its full size during puberty. Its root is attached to the wall of the abdomen, while its tube-shaped body or shaft are compromised of erectile tissues. The erectile tissues fill with blood during sexual arousal. This causes the penis to become erect and rigid and prepared for coitus. The penis is made up of several parts. The glans penis, which in uncircumcised males is partially covered by the foreskin, is at the head of the penis. The urethra is the tip of the glans penis. When the penis is erect, the urine will not be able to come out of the urethra as only semen will be ejaculated from the body. The scrotum is located behind the penis. It is loose and pouch-like and it holds the testicles or testis inside it. The scrotum is located outside the body in order to provide a cooler temperature for the testis, which has seminiferous tubules inside it and produce sperm. Along the back of each testis is the epididymis, where the sperm cells mature carried and stored. During sexual arousal, the sperm pass into the vas deferens to the urethra. The testis is also where testosterone, the primary male sex hormone, is produced. Alright class, did you get it? Now let's have a self-check. What is the correct sequence for the path of sperm? Arrange these words that are shown in your screen right now. Vas deferens, urethra, penis, seminiferous tubules, epididymis. You have 10 seconds. Time's up! Here are the answers. First one, seminiferous tubules, followed by epididymis, followed by vas deferens, next is urethra, and lastly, the penis. 
Did you got it correct, class? Now let's continue. The vas deferens, as mentioned earlier, transports mature sperm to the urethra. It is part of the internal organs in the reproductive system. Attached to the vas deferens are the seminal vesicles, small pouches that make seminal fluid which nourishes and helps sperm travel. Also, additional fluid from the prostate gland which is located under the urinary bladder is added to the sperm cells and seminal fluid combination known as semen. Semen is ejaculated from the penis at the time of the male orgasm. Next, the bulbiferal glands located on each side of the urethra and just below the prostate gland produce clear fluid that helps lubricate and neutralizes the acidity of urine that are left in the urethra. Look at the picture class. This is the bulbiferal glands. Another self-check, how much sperm is in 3.5 ml of semen? Hmm, what do you think? The answer is, it is around 400 million sperm cells. That's a lot, right? And when a sperm cell encounters an egg cell through coitus, fertilization can happen. Now, let us proceed to the roles of hormones in the male reproductive system. Hormones in both males and females are controlled by the feedback mechanisms. Feedback mechanisms or feedback loops enable the body to maintain homeostasis or a normal steady state. These bring the body toward or away from homeostasis. In males, a negative feedback system which causes a decrease in function controls sperm production. This means that negative feedback inhibits the release of GRH or gonadotropin releasing hormone, as well as FSH or follicle stimulating hormone, and also LH or luteinizing hormone. But why do these hormones need to be controlled or decreased, the GRH, FSH, and LH? Well, class, when males enter puberty, the hypothalamus in the brain starts secreting GRH, which makes the pituitary gland also in the brain start releasing FSH and LH for the first time. FSH goes to the testis to stimulate sertoli cells. Sertoli cells are special cells that nourish the sperm cells. These are produced by the testis. Thus, spermatogenesis is started. LH also goes to the testis to stimulate another group of cells called Leydig cells in order to make and release testosterone into the testis and the bloodstream. Now class, testosterone is the primary male sex hormone. It helps in sperm production and is also responsible for the development of male secondary sex characteristics such as development of a more angular facial structure, growth of facial and body hair, a deepening of the voice, and an increase in bone mass, fat distribution, and muscle size and strength. Now, the negative feedback mechanism is in place to ensure that there is no excess in hormones. The Sertoli cells produce a hormone called inhibin, which inhibits the release of GRH and FSH. Inhibin is released into the blood when the sperm count is too high, and if a sperm cell numbers are not enough, inhibin is not released. Now class, to sum it up, these are the parts and the functions of the male reproductive system that we talked about. We have the penis, urethra, scrotum, testicles or testis, seminiferous tubules, epididymis, vas deferens, seminal vesicles, prostate gland, and bulbiferal gland. Also, we discussed the roles of hormone in the male reproductive system, such as testosterone, GRH or gonadotropin releasing hormone, FSH or follicle stimulating hormone, and LH or luteinizing hormone. And that's it for our part one of this video lesson. Thank you so much for watching and please wait for the next part of our lesson wherein I will discuss to you the female reproductive system. 
But before we end this video, shout out to Ashley Haley 119 and to all grade 9 Kamatis of SNNHS. Thank you so much all for watching. Also, shout out to Halier 1836, a grade 9 student of Rowan Jen. Thank you all so much for watching and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Please do like and follow our official Facebook page at Maestrang Techie. If you are looking for t-shirt printing, please message our official Facebook page, Sela Prints and Designs. See you on my next video.